Hi everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at doing some basic mathematical operations using sig figs. Um, so what we want to take a look at first is how do we handle doing addition or subtraction and uh, how do we carry through sig figs in our work. So let's take a look at an example. Here we're looking at uh, the problem 3.1 minus 0.42. Now to do this I need to apply a rule which says that I'm going to keep the last full column of sig figs whenever I'm adding or subtracting. Now in order to do this we really need to write out this problem like we were taught way back in elementary school. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to write um, 3.1 and I'm going to be subtracting from that 0.42. So I want to line up my decimal points so that I'm putting the numbers set up like this and then I'm just going to go ahead and subtract and I'm going to find uh, the result of this subtraction problem. So I find that I've calculated an answer which is the same as what my calculator would tell me 2.68. However, this is not going to be my final answer. I need to evaluate what is the last full column of significant digits for these two numbers. I can see that 3.1 is significant one place beyond the decimal. I see that 0.42 is significant two places beyond the decimal. So here, I need to report an answer that's going to be significant one place beyond the decimal. So I can only report an answer which is significant to the tenths level. Now, because I did calculate 2.68, when I'm rounding, what I want to do is report an answer of 2.7. Our rule when we're dealing with multiplication or division is slightly different. Here what we're going to be doing is keeping the least number of significant digits. So I need to evaluate both numbers, see how many sig figs they have, and then whatever my answer is, I'm going to round to that number of significant digits. I can see that the number 3.14 has three sig figs, one, two, three sig figs, because they're all non-zero digits, and the number 4.2 that I'm multiplying this by has two sig figs, one, two. So when I use my calculator to find this answer, I'll find my uh, whatever that result is, and then I'm going to round it off to two significant digits. So let's go ahead and use the calculator to find that answer. I've got 3.14 multiplying by 4.2, and I find an answer of 12.56. That's what the calculator tells me, but I need to round this off to the correct number of sig figs. The correct number of sig figs will be two based on 4.2 having two sig figs. So I need to evaluate this number and decide. Okay, I have to keep this. I need to keep a digit in the ones column. The question is, will it be a two or will it be a three? Am I writing down 12 or am I writing down 13 as my answer? Because 12.56 is closer to 13 than it is to 12.0, my answer is going to be 13 in this case. One final thing that we'll take a look at today is what if I'm dealing with numbers that are in scientific notation. Now, in scientific notation, if we were multiplying, this is in fact an uh, addition problem, but if we were multiplying, I would just be looking at the significant, determining how many sig figs are in those values, and then I would keep that number of sig figs in my answer. So if I was multiplying these two values, I would report an answer that has two sig figs because 1.5 has two sig figs, 4.1 has two sig figs. Now, this is addition. So my strategy has to be a little bit different. Remember our rule for addition and subtraction is that we will keep the last full column of sig figs. There's two different strategies that we can use in order to accomplish this goal. One would be to write the numbers both in standard notation. I'm going to go ahead and write those down now and then we'll talk about how it sets up. So we can see that I've written both of these numbers in standard notation. So if I go ahead and add them up, I can find what the total value is going to be. Now let's remember that our rule for addition and subtraction is that we will keep the last full column of significant digits. My last full column is in fact the one that has the five and the four from the two numbers. So my answer that I can report if I'm going to write it in standard notation would be one, nine, zero, 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 zero. 
So that would be an answer of 190,000. Or, one point nine times ten to the fifth. There's a different strategy that we can use in order to solve this. That would involve writing both of these numbers still in scientific notation, but we're going to kind of break a rule that we're going to produce a significant, which is not between um, one and ten. We're actually going to make one of them smaller than that, so we can use the same exponent for each value. So here what I've done, 1.5 times 10 to the 5 is the same value. 4.1 times 10 to the 4 is the same thing as 0.41 times 10 to the 5. And this is going to allow me to line up my decimals and I'm going to be able to see that last full column. is still going to be that column that produces the result of 9 right here. So again, I would need to round off my answer to 1.9 times 10 to the 5.